Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Corcoran. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the uh, Conservation Program Manager and Interim Deputy Director for the Pennsylvania Chapter of the Sierra Club. And I'm also the coordinator for the Safe Pennsylvania Forest Coalition, which is the group of organizations that have been putting on these webinars. Um, this is our ninth Get to Know Your uh, State Forest webinar. And if you would like to see any of the others that we have done, uh, I will be sharing out the, uh, the links to that when I share out the recording for this presentation. Uh, we are recording today. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please put them in the chat at the bottom. And we will have about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the presentation for a Q&A with Jessica, our forester today. Um, I don't worry about unmuting any questions that are put in the chat. I will read off at the end. So that way we don't have to worry about folks coming on and off mute at the end. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Jessica Pierce, our forester from Clear Creek State Forest to get us started today. All right, um, thank you for inviting me to speak to Sierra Club of Pennsylvania about the Clear Creek State Forest. Uh, like you heard, my name is Jessica Pierce and I'm a forester with the DCNR Bureau of Forestry. Um, I worked with the Bureau of Forestry for about 10 years and almost four years now in the Clear Creek. Although I do grow up in this area, so um, I'm familiar with the state forest and I uh, have a lot of respect for it. I, I primarily work with private forest landowners um, and a little bit on the state forest land as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to discussing the Clear Creek State Forest with you. I'm looking forward to your questions as well. So the Clear Creek State Forest, also known as Forest District 8, is located in West Central Pennsylvania. Um, we are... Um, our district is diverse. We include urban and community forests in um, um, Butler, Beaver counties, uh, farmland in Mercer counties, and our more remote forests in Clarion and Jefferson counties, and kind of everything in between. Most of our forest districts, so our state forest lands, is in the northern part of our district, which is what we're going to talk mostly about today. The Clear Creek Forest District, like I said, is located in West Central Pennsylvania. Um, our district covers Beaver, Lawrence, Mercer, Butler, Armstrong, Clarion, Jefferson, and parts of Anango and Forest Counties as well. Our district office is in the town of Clarion. We have a maintenance headquarters in our Clear Creek tract, which is in Jefferson County uh, near the Clarion River. And we have three foresters in our field offices. So um, these are mostly folks that work, like myself, that work in private forest lands. Um, so, so we want to be close to the public that we serve. Uh, we have an office in Moraine State Park in Butler County and MK Goddard State Park in Mercer County as well. So our district staff, um, this is a breakdown of when we're fully staffed, this is what it should look like. We have uh, about 21 individuals, half of our staff work seasonally, and the other half is uh, full-time all year round. So we have two managers. Our district manager is Nathan Feist, and our assistant district manager is Jake Scheib. We have two excellent clerical staff members and eight foresters and forest technicians. So we have a management forester who is responsible for the recreation and management of our state forest land, two fire foresters that work primarily with, um, with their fire programs that include prescribed fire, as well as uh, wildland fire on both public and private land. Three service foresters like myself that work mostly with private forest landowners. And then we also have two forest technicians who work seasonally to support our, um, the rest of our forestry staff. And even though these are designations, we do work in all areas of uh, forestry in our state, uh, on our state forests. Um, we also have seven excellent maintenance staff members, one supervisor, three equipment operators, two maintenance repairmen and a semi skilled laborer. Um, who they're responsible for maintaining our infrastructure throughout the state forest, which is very important um, for all of us. We also, uh, on our books, have a forest ranger and an environmental education specialist position. Both those positions are currently vacant, um, but if you are interested um, and uh, qualified, keep an eye out for those positions if that's something you are interested in doing. 
for our state forest. Both those positions would work seasonally as well. So how did we get here? Our state forest was first uh, founded in 1920. Our name for many years is the Catanning State Forest or the Catanning Forest District. Um, and that name is after the, the Native American tribe. Um, but as you can imagine, the confusion with the town of Catanning um, became an issue. Our first land purchase occurred in Heath Township, Jefferson County. Much of the land now is part of the Clear Creek State Park and that occurred in 1919, just before the Forest District, district was founded. District office uh, has moved location over the years, but it's always been located in Clarion. Um, in 1980, our name of our state forest land should change to Clear Creek State Forest based off of the Clear Creek Stream. Um, at, that, at that time, that was the primary forest tract we managed. So um, that's why uh, the name became the Clear Creek and that's what people called it. Uh, our, at that time, the Catanning Forest District was still our name, but later that changed. And now we are the Clear Creek State Forest in the Clear Creek Forest District. Our state forest has been impacted like most of our rest of Pennsylvania state forest over the years. Uh, logging was a major industry throughout uh, the history of our state forest. Uh, in the 1800s, the first sawmill was built in Clear Creek and Town Run Tracks. So those are Jefferson County tracks uh, as early as 1833. Uh, the first reported steam railroad used specifically for hauling logs for timber harvest uh, is actually reported to have occur occurred on our Town Run Track. Um, so those were, that was a steam railroad specifically. And that was in 1864. So much of the state forest was cut over at that time. In 1895, um, when the timber industry was winding down at that time, the uh, oil boom struck. So our first oil well was drilled on the Talon Run Track in 1895. Um, another major impact that occurred on our state forest and the early history of the district was in 1905, um, when a major wildfire burned over much of the state forest. It started in Siegel and traveled the whole way to Lolita, if you're familiar with this area. Um, and it definitely influenced the tree species and the forest uh, um, composition that we still see today. So what does the Clear Creek State Forest look like? So the Clear Creek State Forest um, is primarily part of uh, three physiographic regions, which you'll see in the, on the map, the High Plateau, glaciate, the Northwestern Glaciated Plateau, and the Pittsburgh Low Plateau section. So um, these physiographic region, regions influence the um, topology of the site and also therefore the, uh, the type of forests that grow there. So the high plateau is known for broad and flat upland areas with deep valleys. This is what you'll find in a lot of our state forests in Jefferson, Clarion, um, and Forest Counties. Our tracks in Mercer County are part of the Northwestern Glaciated Plateau. So this is a very different, um, topography and different forest types you'll find there. It's much flatter um, with more lakes and ponds carved out from this glacier. And then the southern parts of some of our forest, forest areas and a lot of our, the rest of our forest district are Pittsburgh Low Plateau, um, which is basically hilly with a lot of strip mines. If you've been there, I'm sure you can attest to that. Um, but all very important and uh, very important forest types in uh, regions in our state. So the pie chart is a breakdown of our um, forest, forest stand types in, this one was from 2016, so it doesn't include a lot of our newer tracks. As you can see, uh, deciduous oak forests of various types are our most common forest type throughout the Clear Creek State Forest. So we do have a little bit of Northern hardwood and Allegheny hardwood, so more of those uh, maple beech type forests, but primarily that oak, deciduous oak hardwood um, is the most common. That being said, we do have a lot of great conifer stands throughout the Clear Creek State Forest. The photo is uh, one of those conifer stands with some deciduous trees mixed in that's near the Clarion River. So it's kind of that classic hemlock forest that you'll find there. And, and this is part of that, um, that high plateau area. Water is a major part of the makeup of our state forest as well. The map is a watershed map. So primarily almost all of our forest district is in the Ohio basin. There's a little, little, little tiny, I don't think it's my cursor, but a 
a tiny little chunk of uh, Jefferson County that's in the Susquehanna watershed. Most of our water goes, eventually runs into the Ohio River. Uh, a lot of it's in the Allegheny watershed and then our Mercer County tracks run into the Ohio, upper Ohio watershed. Two of our state forests do bar, bar, uh, border larger rivers. The Allegheny and the Clarion rivers are both nat nationally designated wild and scenic rivers, um, which is a really important designation, something we're proud of being a part of. There are also a number of high quality streams that run through our state forest, um, of various designations, but they provide um, excellent aquatic resources and also recreational resources as well, which I will talk more about. So managing the state forest. Um, our mission, and if you've tuned into any of these before, I'm sure you've heard this, is to ensure the long-term health, viability, and productivity of the Commonwealth's forests and to conserve native wild plants. So that is the basis for all of the, that we do on our state forest land, um, or on all lands, really within um, the, the Bureau of Forestry. And we do this through a lot of planning and professional knowledge and experience. Our uh, plans include the Penns Woods, which is our larger uh, long-term strategic plan that's currently under review right now, and, and we're, a new plan is coming, so stay tuned for that. Our state forest resource management plan is developed on a, a shorter rotation, but that helps direct managing how we manage our state forests across the state. And then the district resource management plan is focused just on our forest district. And even if we go even further, our landscape management units help to plan, um, help us plan management activities um, for, um, for our certain areas and tracts of the state forest. As I mentioned, professional knowledge and experience is always a great tool to have. Um, all of our foresters have, have degrees in forest science or forestry of some sort from an SAF accredited school. Um, we also rely on a ton of professionals in our central office and, and throughout the state. Um, these include forest health specialists, botanists, wildlife biologists, and we really uh, can lean on those folks when we start getting into managing some more um, specific or unique um, parts of our, our forest ecosystem. So, Ecosystem management is basically the basis for how we implement forest management decisions on our state forest. So the idea of ecosystem management um, in a nutshell is to conserve those natural patterns and processes of the forest, um, make sure we have long-term sustainability. Uh, it takes to, tries to take into account um, as many users of that ecosystem as possible. This does include humans as well as um, humans are part of the greater ecosystem and, and our users of that forest. So uh, threats to the state forests are certainly something that we have to um, manage for and take into account as we're making management decisions across the state forest. So one of the larger um, issues that we deal with is a high white tailed deer population. So too many white tailed deer on uh, forest, state forests or private forests have a significant impact on what's growing there. So that means your small tree seedlings and also your, your native, even sorry, northern natured plants can certainly be impacted by too many white-tailed deer. We do utilize the Game Commission's DMAP program, um, which helps us strategically encourage hunting in certain parts of the state forest where we find those white-tailed deer populations are too high. Um, one of the interesting things about our district is that we do conduct a deer pellet count survey with Penn State Dubois Wildlife Technology student, students. Um, this is an annual um, program. We walk transit, sex, count deer pellets, and help come up with a trend for deer impacts on our state or deer numbers on our state forest. So it's a great experience for them, and also, you know, it's a great data collection tool for us. Uh, this, um, this shows. Uh, so don't worry about the numbers as much as the trend here. This shows our annual average transect counts of deer, of deer pellet counts. So as you can see, this shows us on the Clear Creek track that in the early 2000s, the numbers were high. They dropped down in the mid uh, 2010s. And we're on, an, unfortunately, we're on an upward swing again. So this information can be really helpful for us when we're making management decisions, such as perhaps when to take down a deer exposure fence. On, um, on a part of our state forest. So in addition to too many deer, 
uh, insect and disease uh, have been and, and probably always will be an uh, impact on sustainability of our forests. So uh, spongy moth, or it, you might note it as gypsy moth, is an, uh, has been a problem on our state forest for many years. Uh, this, the photos of a little baby spongy moth on a little oak, oak seedling. We, uh, we do treat for spongy moth and we're, we're lucky here in the Clear Creek that um, this past year, our numbers of um, moth is, has been less than a lot of other forest districts. So we saw a lot less oak mortality um, than others unfortunately have. So that's a good thing for us. Um, another one you might see more of or hear more of is called beech leaf disease. This impacts our beech. It's a fairly new disease that we're, um, that we're seeing on our, on our forest landscape. So you know, we'll have to see how it impacts the composition of our forest moving forward but it's certainly, certainly something to be aware of. Um, other insects and disease, uh, we are especially concerned about our hemlock bluidelgia due to, due to a lot of our high quality hemlock forests. Um, oak wilt is an up and coming issue that we are seeing in parts of Pennsylvania. So um, that impacts primarily our red oak species. These are things that we're always monitoring and um, trying to manage. And unfortunately there's probably gonna be new ones um, as, for, as, um, as time goes on. One of the fastest growing and, and largest issues to our state forests, uh, all forests are non-native invasive plants as well. Uh, Japanese barberry is one we, we deal with a lot, especially in the Kennerdell tract in Manego County. Uh, we're finding you know, Japanese barberry though in, in many other areas. We don't have a lot of Asiatic bittersweet that's in the, the bottom right-hand photo there on our state forests, but it's a major issue in a lot of private lands. So unfortunately it's something that we look for. Um, the, uh, all of these things that we're dealing with, unfortunately, can be amplified by climate change. Uh, we do have this, DCNR does have a climate change adaptation plan that sets out strategies for um, dealing with that. So that's something we can use um, to help manage the, the impacts of climate change. That's certainly a threat for a state forest system. Um, rogue, I call them rogue, rogue recreators can also certainly impact our state forests. That would include illegal ATV use perhaps a mountain biker who wants to make his own trail. Um, these can certainly impact you know, native plant species and, and you know, threatened and endangered plants are certainly threatened um, when that occurs. And I put whenever is next because the natural world, world is dynamic and there's always something new to learn to deal with. So um, you know, we're always monitoring and trying to keep tabs on what's gonna be next. So we try to manage these threats in a number of ways, and I'm just going to touch on some of them. Um, this is this section could go on for another hour probably, but one of the things we do is to monitor, record, prevent, and control invasive plants, pests, and diseases on state land. Um, so the photo is of our aerial um, aerial pest survey we get in a plane. This is of the Kennerdale Tract, in Minneo County. Uh, we look for defoliation of some of those mid-summer mid defoliation and how, that helps us track um, some of our more expansive tracks of land for diseases. Um, so one of the other things we do in addition to um, trying to control those pests and, um, and you know, we have resources as well for basic plant control, which is great. We do have a protocol called EDRR or Early Detection Rapid Response. This is developed by our botanists um, to help us identify new populations of invasive plants before they become a bigger issue and, and try to control them um, at that time. Uh, so that, um, that's a very brief overview of, of the many things we do to help try to mitigate those, um, those plants, pests, and diseases that can impact our forest ecosystems. One of the things we do in our state forests as well is sustainably harvest timber and encourage forests to divert forest ecosystem diversity. Um, we harvest timber to diversify age classes, um, provide wildlife habitat, and try to encourage a healthy generation of future trees. Um, in addition to trying to provide sustainably harvested timber for the forest products industry. So in, in, along those lines, um, our state forests are managed as working forests under the principles of ecosystem management, as I already mentioned. We, we work to work to ensure that our state lands are cared for in a way that promotes forest health, sustainability, and diverse ecosystems. 
Um, we want to provide a source of important wood products, um, provide rec recreational opportunities for us and also enjoyment um, and a productive home for wildlife and other organisms as well. One of the ways we do that is through, um, is with silviculture to conduct timber harvests. So the map on the right is of our Cal and Run tract. This is a map that shows our, uh, our timber harvest operations that have occurred since 2005. You'll see the, the yellow polygons there are our shelter wood harvests, which is basically a re regeneration method of harvesting. Uh, you're still gonna see trees in that landscape after that shelter wood harvest. And the red polygons are, we call it overstory removal. You might uh, look at it and say clear cut. It's the idea of removing that overstory and letting those trees that we've already um, established on the forest landscape to grow into larger trees. This map is part of our hunting map. So it is an interactive map that's available on our, on our um, agency's website. So it's a good tool if you wanna go and see what these look like in person. And um, if you're a birder also, it's a good way to find those early successional forests, which do provide habitat for a lot of um, bird species that we don't always see in other places. So um, we determine how many acres should be harvested um, every 10 years based on our harvest allocation model. So the Clear Creek is tasked with harvesting about 200 acres a year out of the approximate 9,000 acres that our zone is available to timber harvesting. Um, this, is, this is, as is true for all state forests across the state, our Clear Creek State Forest is sustainably certified by both the Forest Stewardship Council and the Sustainable Forestry Initiative or FSC and, FS, and SFI as you might know them. We uh, have many tools available to us to help manage our state forests and deal with the threats that I already discussed. So the photo on the top is of a deer exposure fence. So you might see this on our state forest if you're out and about. Uh, the deer exposures help give uh, the trees and the plants in the forest a chance to grow above deer browse height when those deer numbers are too high. And um, we do try to take those fences down after about 10 years. Um, if hopefully by then those trees are uh, above the, the mouths of deer so they can grow to, uh, unrestricted. So the second photo down is of a forest after a few years after a overstory removal cut. So as you can see, it's teeming with life. And uh, I know these overstory removals can look jarring to folks that are unfamiliar with them um, or are familiar with them uh, immediately after, but you can see after a short period of time, they are really, um, uh, wonderful places to go to find unique wildlife species. And as like I said, the, um, the birding there can be excellent. We also use lots of tools such as herbicides to help us control mesa plant populations that threaten our sustainability um, of our forests. Other tools we have at our, um, at our use are, are prescribed fires. So those can help to encourage oak seedling success um, and also promote fire adapted plants if we have any of those in our state forests. Uh, we also do things like plant native seed mixes on, um, on log landings after timber sales wrap, wrap up. So we're always trying to do things that promote our forest in a way that you know, we can use those timber products um, and get those off the land while also promoting wildlife and, um, and all the other um, and, and, and places for all the other organisms to live as well. In the past, we've also Work quite a bit with the U.S. Forest Service, uh, the research station in the Allegheny National Forest, um, to provide a location for important forest resource. So you may see examples of that or send into that if you're on about Mark Clear Creek State Forest. So um, in addition to dealing with the mix of plants, pests, and diseases, and sustainably harvesting timber, we also work to plant and conserve native plants. Um, as I mentioned, we try to plant native seed mixes on our log landings, but we'll, we also have worked to convert uh, whole season lawn grasses to native plant meadows whenever we can. We also use best management practices um, and try to serve as an example to, to others when it comes to roads and infrastructure. So this means you know, building roads in a way to reduce erosion. Um, and and um, we do things like maintaining forest buffers on our streams, which is really important. Um, we have worked to try to ensure stream connectivity um, when we're replacing bridges and culverts to help 
our aquatic ecosystems as well. So as I mentioned, I'm a service forester that primarily works on private land. So I uh, wouldn't do my job justice if I didn't put a plug in for, our, for those programs. So almost all of our staff is trained in wildfire suppression. Um, and we do have staff, like I mentioned, as fire foresters that work um, solely or primarily at least on preventing and controlling wildflower fires on both state and private land. Uh, so our service foresters um, work with private forest landowners to provide information and assistance. So if you're a private forest landowner, um, you, you can call your, your local forest district if it's not ours and talk to your service forester. We also work to educate the public about healthy forests through a variety of ways. Um, that photo is from our Clarion Landowner Conference that we hold every spring. And we also work, like I mentioned before, I think in our urban and community spaces um, to promote a healthy native tree canopy whenever we can. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the state forest tracks and also um, some recreational opportunities that are available in the Clear Creek State Forest. This is our public use map. You can see there, we're kind of spread out over a number of counties. We manage 16,716 acres in Mercer, Venango, Clarion, Forest, and Jefferson counties. Um, and since we are a fairly small forest system as far as, as, far as the state forests go, I will look at each forest track individually as well. So what can you do in the Clear Creek? We have primitive and motorized camping opportunities that I will talk more about in a moment. As I mentioned, we are, we do border to uh, Nash, uh, scenic and wild rivers, the Clarion and the Allegheny, so there are plenty of canoeing and kayaking opportunities there. Hunting and fishing are popular recreational opportunities on our state forest. We also manage 77 miles of, of hiking trails. Um, so uh, 20 of those are hiking only, or, and the rest are shared use. So that includes um, mountain biking or horseback riding. Um, the Allegheny, as I mentioned, the Allegheny and Clarion water trails provide water trail opportunities as well. Um, and there's a lot of opportunity for things like birding, um, looking for cool plants, looking, um, at, looking at, at an awesome vista. We have two designated overlook areas on our state forest. Um, and we don't have any designated picnic areas in the Clear Creek State Forest, um, but we do, you might be able to find picnic tables at a number of our high use areas. So camping in the Clear Creek. Um, unlike our state, our friends at the state park, we don't have um, designated campground areas. We do have uh, opportunities for diverse camping or uh, me, dispersed camping, however. We maintain five motorized campsites in our Callan Run track in Jefferson County. You'll see those on the map with the little RV icons and the photo in the corner um, is one of those one of those sites. Motorized campsites have no hookups. Um, they have a picnic table and a fire ring for your use. Uh, permits are currently free, but they do require um, they do require a reservation. So call our office um, to reserve those. That process will, will likely be changing soon here. So keep an um, keep an ear out for for changes to a reservation process in the future. Primitive camping is also available throughout the state forest, um, except along Beartown Rocks Trail, which runs from the Beartown Rocks Overlook down to uh, Clear Creek State Park. Uh, primitive camping is what you would call maybe backpack camping. Uh, you don't need a permit as long as you only stay at that site for one night. Um, there are some, some site restrictions as far as um, how far you need to be uh, camping away from a stream or the trail. But otherwise, basically you can camp anywhere one night without a permit, like I mentioned. However, we do recommend that you call our district office and let them know your plans so that um, if there's an emergency or something goes on, we know, you know where you're supposed to be. We also manage the Danor Primitive Camping Area, and that's in our Canadale tracks along the Allegheny River in Venango County. Um, this is an area um, that it has a number of fire rings and picnic tables. It does have a composting toilet um, that is available. It, you cannot drive to it, so you can only get to it if you um, use more of the land trails, or it's a popular spot for boaters to stop um, on, their, on their trip. So it's a water trail accessible as well. 
because we aren't adjacent to some of our state forests or excuse me, our state parks like Clear Creek, Clear Creek and Cocoa Forest, um, there are some campground opportunities for, for there as well if you're planning on recreating on the state forest. We maintain 77 miles of trails, like I mentioned, throughout the, um, throughout the state forest. Many of those are hiking only. Um, most of our trails are located in the Clear Creek Tract in Jefferson County, the Kennardale Tract in Venango, and the Clarion Riverlands Tract, which we work with the Cook Forest State Park on in Clarion County. We do we have two parts of larger trail systems on our state forests. So the um, the North Country Scenic, the North Country Scenic Trail, and the Baker Trail um, are two larger trail systems that do make an appearance on the state forests and on the Clarion Riverlands and Maple Creek Tracts. Um, our state forest also has a number of administrative roads that um, are often gravel and gated, so you can't drive them, but they are accessible if you um, want to take a walk on them and enjoy a less rugged hike. And we do not have any ATV or um, designated snowmobile trails on the Clear Creek State Forest at this time either. So the First track I'm going to talk about is our Clear Creek and Callan Run tracks. Um, these are located, like I mentioned, in Jefferson County near the Clarion River east of Siegel. There are five motorized campsites in the Callan Run tracks we just talked about. The Pine Run Loop is the top left photo. This is in the northern part of our district. This is a hiking only two loop, two mile loop trail. Um, it does go through um, our uh, a really uh, uh, unique hemlock and boulder area that is common along that part of the Clarion River. That's a nice spot to go. The Beartown Rocks Overlook and Beartown Rocks area um, is located here on our state forest in the Clear Creek Tract. Beartown Rocks is a really unique geologic place to visit. It has huge boulders that look like they were just sort of scattered about, so it's a fun place to explore. There you'll find the Baritone Rocks Overlook, which you can um, walk up uh, some steps to get to. It provides a, a really nice look, overlook of the um, Clarion River Valley. The Laurel, Laurel Fields area is also kind of a unique site on our state forest. Um, it includes a fairly flat, um, drivable trail. So um, it's a nice place to go if you're not ready for um, crawling over the boulders at Baritone Rocks. Laurel Fields is managed for mountain laurel, so it's a popular spot to visit in June whenever that mountain laurel is blooming. On the Callan Run Tract is the location of our, our only Marcellus Gap well on the Clear Creek State Forest. Um, however, there are many shallow wells you'll see dotted across the landscape, both at Clear Creek and our, our other forest tracts as well. All right, the Clarion River Lands Tract. So, this tract is in primarily in Clarion County. It's kind of unique in its uh, organization. So everything above 1,400 feet elevation is state forest, and everything below along the Clarion River is Cook Forest State Parkland. So we are to Cook Forest to help us manage a lot of the recreation in that area. You'll see Blyson Run. That is a exceptional value stream that runs through um, this tract. As I mentioned, the North Country Trail also runs through the Clarion Riverlands tract. And you can find a shelter um, on this part of the um, on the trail as well that's on our state forest land. So the Maple Creek Tract um, is a is just over a thousand acres. It's in Forest County. So like the rest of our state forest, this man tract is managed for multiple uses, including timber. Uh, it's a popular tract for hunting and fishing, uh, as the Maple Creek does run through the Maple Creek Tract. Um, recreational opportunities in this tract are fairly limited otherwise, but it does include the North Country Trail and the Baker Trail that, that continues from the from Cook Forest and then runs into our Maple Creek Tract. There's a shelter on this tract as well. All right. The Kennardale Tract is located on the <laughs> River in Allegheny or in Venango County. I'm sorry. The Allegheny River in Venango County. Um, this tract is just over 3,000 acres. It's, uh, it includes really uh, some unique ecosystems. Uh, it travels from an upland forest types down steep slopes to the Allegheny River. We have some really rich forests. 
I put the Clear Creek State Forest doesn't have any designated natural or wild areas on our state forest lands, but Kennerdale um, is designated by SFI as a high value conservation forest. And um, it's also a designated wild plant sanctuary. Um, both these designations help us to plan for and conserve um, and protect threatened and endangered plant species. So as I mentioned, the Danner Primitive Camping Area um, is in the Kennerdale Tract. It's along the river and there's a photo of it there. The Denison Point Overlook, um, which you'll see here, is accessible from the Overlook Trail. It's a great destination if you're um, to hike to, provides an excellent view of the Allegheny River and the town of Kennerdale. One of the projects that we recently completed in the Kennerdale Tract is a strip mine reclamation project. Um, this used to be a dangerous high wall area that was recently uh, reclaimed and it's now, um, photography has become less, less dangerous and we have planted a native meadow mix on, its site, on the site. So it's actually a nice place to go and look for native plants. We do have plans to um, plant some tree clusters there as well. There are also a number of historical resources on Kennerdale. So this is one of our later acquisitions. Um, we didn't acquire it till it was after, the, after 1980. Um, so there's a lot of existing um, uh, infrastructure sort of on this tract. So the Balloon Run Iron Furnace in the southern part of the district is, a, um, is an iron furnace. It was built in 18, 1840s. Um, in order to run an iron furnace, you need a lot of charcoal. So a lot of the state forest was cut over um, at that time, the late 1800s, to make charcoal for that iron furnace. There's also a oil pumping station along Fisherman's Cove Trail in the northern part of the property. Uh, this was built in the early 1900s, in the early days of the oil boom, and you can still see part of that infrastructure from that, um, from that time as well. So it's an interesting place to see how the, the impacts of the land that, that, that were there and, um, and how the land has uh, recovered itself around it. There are 23 miles of trails available in the Kennerdale Tract. The yellow trails are for foot traffic, traffic only. So those are hiking trails. The red trails are multi-use. So you can uh, mountain bike or horseback ride. Um, horseback riding is a popular use um, on those trails in the state forest. All right, so um, the Wolf Creek Tract is an interesting tract. It's small, it's just 64 acres outside of Grove City in Mercer County. It has an interesting history that you'll see on the land you visit. Um, it's been owned by the state for many years, but only recently have we developed some of the, um, some of the infrastructure, uh, to make it available to users. So we do have a small parking lot now. Um, there is an existing trail that we maintain um, open, although there are plans to develop that trail system a little bit further here in the future. So like I mentioned on the Wolf Creek track, you'll see a lot of um, past mining, coal mining and agriculture use um, but there are some, some sort of hope, uh, signs of hope on that, on that track as well. Um, the swamp milkweed was found in an old agricultural field. Um, there's lots of other milkweed uh, there as well, so, and some other native plants. So even though it's had a, um, it's been impacted by people in the past, um, there's a lot of great uh, ecological resources in that site. All right, and finally, I'll talk about the McKeever track. So this is our most recent addition to the state forest. Um, it's 190 acres in Mercer County. If you grew up in um, Mercer, Crawford, Benango, Butler, Lawrence counties, there's a chance as a student you visited the McKeever um, Learning Center to, um, to learn about the natural world. It was a popular place for school groups and also for um, overnight like summer camps as well. So like I said, it was recently moved from into our, into our care. So we are still, still developing plans for the site at this time. Um, there is a new parking lot on Route 358, which is right about here, my cursor. Um, so you can access the site, although like I said, there is not a lot of infrastructure currently for use. We are uh, working on a trail system. Um, we are also asking the public to stay clear of the buildings that are there as they've been vacant for um, quite a number of years now. Ecologically, the McKeever site is really interesting. Um, it, it has some great streams, 
um, some older forests. And one of the interesting things about this site is McCutcheon Run. So this runs through uh, the southeastern corner of McKeever Tract. So if you've been to Mercer County, there's a lot of flat land and the McCutcheon Run um, area is a, a deep, steep ravine that includes uh, a lot of hemlock and other of those cold, damp um, forest types that we don't get a lot in Mercer County. So we have a lot of, of um, hemlock trees throughout our state forest, as you, as you probably have already heard, um, but we don't see a lot of them in Mercer County. So it's a really unique site um, that we're excited to, to now be responsible for managing. So I assume if you're here, you're interested in or already care for Pennsylvania forests, but I always like to leave people with um, a call to action, so to say. So here are a few things you can do to help encourage healthy, sustainable, and diverse forests in natural areas. So first, I ask you to take care of your state forest lands and leave no trace when you're visiting. If you're interested in volunteering on the state forest, um, call our office to find out more. We don't have a designated friends group at this time, um, but you can always call and see if there are volunteer opportunities available to you. We also ask that you're try to be fire smart and check the fire danger rating before burning, especially in the spring and fall during our higher, um, the higher chance of wildfires in Pennsylvania. Try to plant native plants if you can. Um, if you own land, we encourage you to be a good forest steward. And if you need advice on how to do that, reach out to your, um, your service forester for where you, the county you live in and we can help. Encourage you to champion unique ecosystems. Use local forest products whenever you can and promote streamside forest buffers, which are really important um, and, and fairly easy ways to ensure healthy water for all of us. All right, so thank you for inviting me to talk about the Creek Creek Forest District. Um, please let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you out on our state forest. Thank you for that informative presentation, Jessica. We do have a few questions in the chat already. And for the rest of you, if you have any questions, please pop it into the chat and I will ask them at this time. So I'm just gonna go down the list in the order that we received the questions. Um, the first one is, do you have any thoughts on proforestation to help mitigate climate change? Proforestation is not a term that I'm very familiar with, but would that be like a system migration, actually? I am not 100% on that myself. Um, uh, Carl, if you'd like to um, have an additional uh, message in the chat, I'll ask the next question if you would like to clarify a little bit more. Um, the next question um, was if you had any thoughts about controlled hunt for deer management in critical forest areas? Um, so I know we, on our state parks, they do have some controlled hunts. It hasn't really been needed on our state forest lands since there already are popular hunting areas. Um, you know, as we know, hunting, you know, is a useful tool for helping to manage those high deer population areas. So, um, so, you know, I don't, I don't know what our official position is on controlled hunts, um, but I, I think it is a, is a useful tool at times. Um, the next question was in regards to climate change and if you have any thoughts about uh, tree species from southern areas becoming more dominant in PA's forest. Yeah, um, so it's certainly something that, you know, it's obviously a topic that we consider. Um, in some other forest districts, they are testing out with you know, planting more of those southern species. Um, in areas where we are planting trees. Um, so some of the things, um, you know, it's something that, you know, one of the things that we do is, is really to encourage a healthy, sustainable forest. Um, a sustainable forest is also resilient. So um, even if, you know, we don't do a lot of tree planting on our state forests, at times we do, but um, we really try to rely on, on natural forest regeneration whenever we can. So uh, a healthy, sustainable forest is able, should be able to deal with change, including um, shifting um, species, in, you know, becoming introduced into our area. So um, our, our district, as far as I know, has not planted anything that is um, outside of its normal ecological range at this time. 
Um, but we do, you know, use all our resources available to try to encourage uh, a sustainable forest. The next question is in regards to the lovely drought watches, the, the drought watches that we had this year. And they were asking about drought management in uh, the forest system. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, we, we've been lucky in Northwestern Pennsylvania that we um, did not face the same drought issues. So a lot of the rest of the state did. So in the past year in particular, um, we haven't had to do a lot, but I think it comes back to the same concept of um, when, you, when you manage and promote a sustainable, resilient forest, they are able to adapt um, to, to threats. You know, climate change and drought are, are some of those. Um, the next question uh, you might not have an answer to because, as you mentioned in your presentation, there's only one Marcellus well within the, the forest district, but um, they were wondering if you had any thoughts about the impacts of fracking within the forest system. Um, not particularly. I, you know, so it's unfortunately a lot of our state forests, almost all of our state forests, have severed um, mineral rights. So we don't have a, a lot of control about um, how many wells are um, are, are uh, drilled where fracking takes place. Um, you know, we do what we can to try to mitigate the other impacts, um, such as reducing invasive plants in those areas. Um, if there's any reseeding, making sure it's a native plant mix, um, and trying to make you know encourage smart um, pipeline and other infrastructure planning when we can to reduce like fragmentation of some of those other issues. Um, so we have more control on on that front, I would say. Um, so I mean, it's um, it's certainly something that's being talked about right now, given the current uh, time of year we are in. Um, but yeah, so so you know, we only have one on our state forest now, and, and like I said, it's um, severed gas rights, so we don't have any all rights. Um, and our last question for right now is. Um, what can be done to prevent people from leaving trash along the banks of the river trail? It's a uh, very big question. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, I don't know. I wish I had a great answer for that. Um, you know, it's littering is one of uh, the worst things. So, um, you know, one of the things, like I said, we are, we, we don't have one yet, but we are working on uh, trying to get a ranger position. So. Um, you know, our foresters work in natural resource management, but our, our forest rangers, um, they work more in law enforcement. So um, they do help create more of a presence on some of the, the times of year or the times of the day whenever foresters might not be there. Um, so hopefully that, that can help when that person comes on board, um, that can help. Um, you know, one of the things we can do too is, is when we do see it, um, we try to pick it up and people, don't litter as much if there's not already litter there. So if, so if you can try to keep it clean, um, it'll only help um, others uh, hopefully not litter. And if anyone wants to volunteer their time to pick up trash while they're out on the trail, that's always something that I'm sure is appreciated. Yes, for sure. All right. Um, well, we don't have any other questions right now. Um, if anyone thinks of any other questions, you can pop it in the chat while we're here. Otherwise, if you think of something after the presentation is over, I know myself, I always think of things after the fact and I'm like, oh, I should have responded. I should have asked this question. Um, you do have Jessica's contact information in um, the uh, that last slide right there. I will share it out when I share out the recording of this presentation. Um, or you could always reach out to me as well, and I'm, I will do my best to answer that question or, you know, send it along so that way it can be, it can be answered to the best of its ability. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, go out and enjoy your wonderful green spaces. Thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure talking to you all today. Have a great day, y'all.